Today we're having a little steak throwdown as we try to cook steak in two different types of pans. One is a cheap non-stick, the other is an expensive non-stick, and then my favorite part, we're gonna test the results. So follow me and let's turn up the tasty. <laughs> Today we're back with another steak crust experiment as we seek out the perfect way to make the ultimate steak crust. We've done a couple videos in this series and today we're back trying again. What's different? Well, what's not different is we have the steaks. Right here, two New York strip steaks which have been salted for about an hour. Over here, we have a nonstick skillet. We recently did an experiment, it was cast iron, versus non-stick to see which one turned out the better crust. And we use this skillet of foodie never stick cast iron skillet. Now this is a fairly high end non-stick skillet. Cost me about $45. So we thought we'd ask the question, is there any difference between a high end skillet like this and a cheap one like this? This one costs 10, this one costs 45. None of it's sponsored, Ninja, Foodie, Never Stick. I just wanted something that would hold up. They say that this is good up to 30,000 degrees and will last a lot longer. I doubt my stove gets that hot. This manufacturer here is so proud of their product that they don't even bother to put their name on it, but it did cost $10. I feel like I've seen about a thousand of these things beat up, worn up, scratched up, lining the shelves of Goodwills over the years. So I do suspect that given the price difference, this one's gonna outlast this one, but that's not the question we're asking today. We're gonna see which one makes the better crust. So we're gonna try to keep things about as even as possible. Both these steaks are roughly the same weight and the same size. If I had to guess, uh, one's maybe an eighth of an inch thicker, maybe. What we're gonna do is we're gonna get these Skillets, nice and hot. So I wanna to try to control as many variables as I can. Over here I have an electric stove. I do prefer gas, just what came with the house. But both of these burners are exactly the same size. We're gonna turn them up to, if I get the right one, to let's, I don't know, let's start with level uh, nine. Let's start with level nine. We're gonna let those get nice and hot. And eventually I'll turn around and talk back to the camera. Over here, I have an infrared thermometer. That's gonna allow me to measure the temperature, the surface temperature of each one of these skillets as they cook. That's just an interesting component to see that I'm dropping on the steaks at about the same temperature. And from there, we'll do my favorite part, test the results. Over here, we have a little bit of avocado oil, which is my preferred oil for cooking steaks. Why? Because it has a very high smoke point, which prevents the oil from burning. That will create a bitter exterior on your steak. I also think it does promote a very nice crust. Now, when cooking here, there's a question. They're non-stick. It's not gonna stick anyway. Do we even need the oil? Don't know. I'm gonna use it to keep things constant with our other experiments, but do we even need it? We're currently rocking right here at 250 degrees. And on our cheapy, 290. So actually this one's getting hot. The cheapie's getting hot a little bit faster than this. Why? I think, and I'm not a scientist, but I think it's because this is thicker. This is a thicker metal. You can see it when you hold up the pans. And so it's probably just taking a, it's gonna be a little slower to heat. Same thing we'd see with a cast iron skillet. So we're at 325 on the expensive. Now they've caught up. Pretty close, we're at about 340 on the cheap. So they're running neck and neck. Well, that's really interesting because I'm getting different heat readings on the cheap one. Where I have one side reading about 330, I have the other side reading 440. Whereas on my more expensive one, I have, uh, it seems like the same phenomenon happening. That's interesting. Two hours later. About 400 anyway, these are gonna start to smoke. So we're just gonna go ahead and drop them down. We got it about as close as we can get. A little bit of avocado oil in both. Pick them up, swirl it around to coat. There we go, you can see got a little bit of smoke. Drop our steak, give it a good press. Good contact. From there I'm gonna drop the heat on both of these to about a level six. Now right off the bat, it does look like we're actually getting more smoke off of the cheap non-stick versus the expensive one. Not steam, but actual smoke. I wonder what that's about. 
But here we have a bunch of small beads where this tends to pull up a little bit more with our expensive. Both are set to a level six heat right now. Let's do a quick check. They've been on for about a minute. Let's see, how does our crust look over here? Okay, making some progress. And over here, let's just take a little peek. Also making some progress. Gonna move the steak around, slide it around. Make sure none of that oil's burning. All right, I've never really tried this experiment before. I don't wanna burn the steak, so they've been cooking about two minutes. Let's give them a flip. Here's our expensive steak crust. Right there. And here's our cheap. Not a lot of difference right now. Matter of fact, I'd say the cheap pan is turning out a little bit better steak crust than the expensive one. As I noted earlier, the oil seems to be behaving a little bit differently in the pan. I'm not sure that has a major impact. It's just an observation. And the cheap one seems to be giving off more smoke or steam as it cooks. Quick read on internal temperature. We're at 100 degrees right here. And about 90 degrees. That could be because this is the thinner steak over here by about an eighth of an inch. Now, as I continue to let these cook, one thing I can tell you there is no difference in is the smell. They both smell absolutely amazing. All right, so we've been about another two minutes on the other side. Let's see how they look. Okay, that crust is looking even better than the other side did at first flip. That sear up. Let's check our cheapy. Pretty similar. I would say, at least on the second half of the flip, the cheap steak looks like it's getting more burn to it, whereas the expensive one seems to be a more even sear. Let's check the temperature. Right now, we are at internal of 119 versus an internal of 105. Is that a thickness difference, a minor thickness, thickness difference, or is that some quality of the pan? All right, so this one's done. I'm gonna go ahead and pull that off right now. Take a look at the crust. Oh, that looks excellent. And get that off the heat. Over here, we're running a little bit behind on temp, 110. Let's give it another flip, make sure we don't try to avoid burning it. Might be a little bit too late, actually. Oh yeah, that's way more steam coming off there. Same temperature. Those are done. And I am going to place this toothpick in our cheap steak, and then let's test the results. All right, so the steaks are done cooking. They're right here in front of me. Before I even cut them open and take a look, I, I wanted to point out the differences on the insides of these two pans. You know, the immediate difference is the expensive nonstick skillet, oh, why am I holding my arms up like this? I don't need to do that. I can just go right down like that. You guys can see it all the same. Look, so our expensive one, look at all that oil that's left in there. That's interesting. Meanwhile, our cheap has none pooling. Now, I, did I use the exact same amount of oil? I don't think so, but I don't think it was so different that it resulted in this much more oil being left in this pan. All right, now come on in real close. Take a look at these steaks because there are some differences you might not see. So the first thing I notice on this, I say cheap steak, it's the same steak, cheap skillet, is it's not as even compared to this. Here we have some more blonde spots, for lack of a better way to put it, but the other contrast, the other thing that I see here is this definitely seems to have more burnt or charred spots. So that's a really interesting difference. It's just a lot darker color on the cheap than on the expensive skillet. Now I should say, this is not a paid post. Funny fact, I have been in a Ninja Foodie infomercial. So you may see me on some late night television if you're up at 2 a.m. in the morning. And I think that they do put forth a good product, but this is not a paid post. It's totally independent review. Let's cut in and see how they look. Now, one thing that I think you'll notice about both these steaks is the internal temperature clearly got away from me a little bit. I don't know what happened. Uh, I tried to pull them both off at the same temperature, but they went from 110 to 130 really quickly, like in the matter of 30 seconds in between uh, 
in between temperature checks. So this is not the color I'd prefer to see on a steak. I think we'd all agree with that. We'd like to see a rare or medium rare. So uh, it's clearly not the skillet's fault. It's the operator's fault on this one. I take full responsibility, it happens. Um, but let's just see how they taste. I'm very disappointed in you. So let's get right to it. Expensive? It's definitely overcooked to how I prefer it. But it has a little bit more chew. That's gonna be common with the strip, but even more common with a slightly overcooked strip steak. But it's still a great tasting steak. It has a little bit of chew, which is more common with a strip steak in general versus a ribeye or filet, but it has even a little bit more chew because it's slightly overcooked. Again, I take responsibility there. You can get the nice, rich flavor from the fat, as I say, the fat is where it's at, both from the steak itself and a little bit from the avocado oil with a nice salty exterior. Hold on, before I test this one, I need to cleanse my palate. All right, next up. Well, there's no question, this one's a little bit more tender over here, but I just think that has to do with it was cooked to a lower internal temperature. It clearly has more pink than its counterpart. Now, is it worth a purchase price of nearly four times more? And the answer is, I really don't think so. I think if you have a cheap nonstick skillet, it's gonna produce very comparable results. If I had to make one adjustment, it would be to maybe turn down or manage that heat a little bit better to avoid some of that burning, or maybe it, it just cannot be avoided. Um, so I think that the expensive skillet had the better crust. That's not a question to me, but is it three, four times better than the inexpensive one? I don't think so. I think the real difference in those pans is gonna be the durability over cooking lifespan. So keep that in mind when you're buying. What do you think about our experiments? What do you think about me overcooking these steaks? I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Maybe not, actually save your comments. Kidding, share the good, share the bad. We try to be authentic, we try to be real with you. Let us know, do you cook with cheap or expensive nonstick pans and have you noticed any difference? I'm going to uh, get back to eating some slightly overcooked steak and I'll see you guys next time.